Welcome back to stage two of the SCX24 Jeep Gladiator build. So it's been a little while, and if you remember, we left off the mini stage with a clear body on a rolling chassis. So obviously there's been quite a bit of progression here. And I think before we jump into looking at all the parts on the table here and what's left to complete this, I think I'm gonna catch you up on kind of the process of how I got to where we are now. So sit back, relax, and let's catch up. All right, now that you're all caught up, I wanted to talk about a few little uh, quirks with this clear body gladiator set. The first of which, it doesn't come with window masks. So as you saw, I had to make my own and I taped masking tape to the exterior of another gladiator body and traced those windows. If you tried to do that on the clear body, you'd likely peel the pre-applied film when you pulled that masking off from the outside. So. It'd be pretty tough. I'm not sure how you do it. You could maybe trace the windows from the inside, but first quirk there. Second one is they do not offer any clear window stickers as an option. You only get uh, tinted. So you can see here, I've got crystal clear windows on this thing. And that's because I put in the extra effort and paint work on this interior. So I definitely wanted to show that off. So the way I achieved this was, uh, actually using some spare JLU sticker sets that came with the clear body. So I had used some windows um, and actually the JLU windows are smaller than this Gladiator. It's scaled up just a bit. So after using the uh, JLU windows, you're left over with kind of a border, you know, on the sticker sheet. So I trimmed around that border, peeled that off, and that's just enough bigger to work out perfectly to this scaled up gladiator body. So there's actually no sticker over the clear window area. It's just that trim. And then of course I cut out a vertical strip to put there in the back windows. And then since the rear window 
has no trim and they just have the tinted sticker. I just left that off completely. And then of course you saw the paintwork on the tailgate. And I did that really just to pop that Jeep logo because I knew it really wouldn't show up on the green. And I figured the white and green would look really nice together, which it does. So that's kind of the uh, quirks of the Gladiator body. Um, the second thing that you saw that I got in was the magnets on this uh, front here. And I did that as I always do it. Um, did the hood first, tape magnets to the outside, glued those in, and then did the uh, body post magnets. And as you can see, those came out great. There's no ghosting, there's no smearing. Just like I always do, and it worked out great as always. So the last build I did, I had a gunmetal backer and I did get some ghosting on that hood. And after talking to a few other people that had similar results, they were also using a gunmetal paint. So I'm wondering if it had something to do with the gunmetal on that one, because you can see this one's backed with white. Most of mine are backed with black. I think I have one backed with silver, but all of those have come out just perfect. So I'm still sticking with my method. I'm just going to watch it, um, maybe do something different if I use a gunmetal backer, but uh, I'll try not to and just cover that up. But uh, moving on from paint and bodywork and magnets, let's look at what's left here. So of course we've got the interior ready to go in. And these are the Flubber Stuffers fenders that I pulled off and that was just to get the magnets in easily, close that body. I've got a C10 roll bar that I may use. I've got some AliExpress rear lights and you saw I already kind of had to fit those on the body and then I added a little extra paintwork detail to those housings. got some Enjora shackles that are going to highlight um, this little Grizzly Works rear bumper and so that's already fitted on there so that is this guy here I'm not going to use the drop hitch and then uh, this is a Shapeways JLU front light bucket print and of course it is not wide enough to hit the light buckets on this so I'm gonna have to cut that in half to stretch it you can see here in the bag, I've got this exo cage rack. This is from Spider Customs on Etsy. So I'm going to assemble that. And then he also has always made me these functional light buckets for the roof racks that he makes. So he made me another set of those. So I'm going to get those wired up with LEDs. I've got a cyclical switch to control lighting. And then of course, I've got some of my favorite Shapeways prints. These are the JLU door handle sets. And then I've got some little metric micro screws in there. So those will go on. I've got some JLU CC hand mirrors. I've got a JLU tire carrier. And that's because of course I'm gonna get a matching spare mounted somewhere back here. So we'll figure that out in a little bit. But that's kind of the long and the short of what we need to do to complete this build. So I think let's jump into it and get it done. Well, we're back 16 holes in the body later, and we've made a little progress here. So we've got door handles installed, the C10 roll bar in the back, and then the CC hand spare tire mount with the matching spare and TSL uh, narrow on there. So I think that rear end now is looking pretty scale, looking pretty good. So 
I think it's time to move on and we're gonna poke four more holes in the body. So as you can see here, I've got this exo cage slash roof rack uh, assembly from Spider Customs on Etsy laid out here. And this is everything he gives you. Um, of course, I requested these functional pods and I also requested an additional just two straight crossbars because I had in mind just using this as an exo cage rather than the rack. Um, so typically it comes with the cross posts with the risers and the mounts. So that would actually sit this, you know, a little bit taller on that rack. It wouldn't sit flush. Um, the rack is just super detailed, very scale, really like this rack. So I'm definitely going to use this on another build, but I think I'm going to put these aside for this one. And then of course we'll get to this, uh, when we get to lighting. So I'm going to set this aside as well. So this is really what we're looking at here, getting fitted up. And, uh, one thing I was looking at here is all these, all these mount points, uh, or really, I guess the two mount points are the, the lower ones here that screw into the body. They're the same length, but this body actually pinches at the nose. So it's a little narrower up here. So if I leave that front one alone, that means I need to take off a little depth, probably with a Dremel on this one to get the, uh, cage to stand vertically and get those cross pieces to be perpendicular. So I'm going to look at uh, doing that, modding that a little bit and uh, getting this fitted on. And once you do that, I think we'll glue up all the crossbars on it, set it and forget it. And then we'll be on to lighting and finishing this guy out. We are back. Exo cage installed and that went on super smooth, nice and level. About as good as you can get. So the way I did this rack in the end was after I trimmed up the body mount points to fit the contours of the body and I took quite a bit off these back ones and angled them. So I had kind of the rack together dry fitted. So I kind of stuck it on there, made sure it fit, figured out where it wanted to be. And uh, then I went ahead and put a little shoe goo and glued all the posts in off the truck and let those sit up not too long, maybe 25, 30 minutes, still kind of flexible. Um, and then I started the install. So at the back, it was very easy. You've got a cross point of the body line. You've got kind of the bottom of the roof and then the, a line coming down from the roof. So that intersection was easy to pop. So then I had it installed and hinged so I could kind of lay it forward, line up one side, get it level, kind of trace the circle here find the center point, get one side popped in and mounted, screwed in. So then I just had one side loose and I could kind of get that where I wanted it, trace it, then take the front so I could hinge it back, pop that hole, and then here it is. So now it's in and uh, those rack posts are still setting up, but I like to use shoe goo because it gives you a little flex, a little bend if needed, but it's also a good hold. But if I wanted to take the roof rack apart, I could probably just twist these and get them to pull out. So a little bit easier to modify in the future than super glue and it gives you some flex. It won't crack necessarily, it'll, it'll flex a little. So that's the exo cage. I think that's looking really nice. Um, so there's not a lot left here. I think we've got a little lighting. So we've got the front lights, the roof lights, and the tail lights to get mounted. And then I think we've got a few more little details, so keep on moving here. Look at that. Those light buckets are in. They look great. Super easy, as you saw. So moving on from those, I've got the light bar out. And uh, I've gone ahead and pre-bent all my LEDs to the 90 that I need them before I test them. So those all work. I've got my remaining one plugged in here to test and I just have this rigged up and taped down for testing. Um, reason I want to test all these beforehand, I mean it's always a good idea, but I'm going to be putting a little shoe goo on the back buckets and lenses and then the way I wire these, I'm going to pop six holes in the roof and run all these through, bring them together, solder them up and make the connection after the fact. So I definitely do not want to have a problem once I get it all wired up. So. Let's uh, flip this last one on and see if this one works. And it does. So it looks like we are ready for install. 
So the way I'm going to do this is I'll basically put a piece of tape on here, mount the light bar, kind of draw a line, figure out where I want the row of holes. Then I can uh, pull the roof rack off and actually lay this down on that line and I'll have all my holes. And I can pop a center mark and uh, get the reamer out, get my holes in there, and then I'll remount the rack and I'll have uh, all these LEDs and lenses and everything glued up and I'll be able to just string them through, lower it down and snap it on. So shouldn't be too hard. And then once it's in, be able to bring them all together, solder them up and make a whip. And uh, that just leaves the rear tail light assemblies. So those are ready to go. They just need to be installed. And uh, I think we are approaching the end minus a few little details. So stay tuned. Okay, back with a little update here on the light bar. So you can see I got it mounted up. Man, it is looking really good. I'm getting super excited about this build. So you can see those wires under there. None of that's been cleaned up on the inside. None of that is wired up yet um, because I was still working on getting the body fitted. And you think, well, isn't it already fitted? Well, I did the magnets uh, and the hinge and everything without the inner fenders just for ease of closing the body. So getting those inner fenders back on there, there was a few issues. And as you saw, uh, one of them was these light buckets on the front are gonna protrude back and they're gonna have the LED. So I had to cut out um, that space basically to allow those to hinge closed and that to all just come down. So that looks like that's gonna work with the LEDs. I'll just have to fold them at a 90, uh, kind of inward, I think, to the center of the hood. But that was the first little issue. And then I still couldn't get the body to uh, hinge down. It was wanting to flex the bumper a little bit, and it really just wasn't grabbing the magnets tight. I could tell something was you know, interfering. So as you can see here, I figured it out. I've got four more holes in the back. And what it ended up being was the, uh, hardware here and the washer. You can see that protrudes down quite a bit from when I added this roll bar. So that was the issue. That was just enough flex to just keep this from wanting to come down cleanly and tight. So, you know, also getting these wires, these are going to have to get routed over here uh, in their final position out of the way of that fender because it sits pretty tight to that plastic. So now the body will sit on there. And you can see here, these back holes are much cleaner. So I figured out a good method um, to do this. Had a little uh, leather punch. This is what I pop holes in my tires with. So I just put it on the largest setting. And uh, I kind of had to mark this blindly, holding them uh, uninstalled kind of over the body and then kind of widened them out with a few more punches. But uh, I'll show you from the underside, it all seems to fit on there nicely. And the hinge now is in the right position. So you can see there, you can see those screws coming through. But uh, not a big deal. You're not going to be able to really see it uh, when it's driving. So that's kind of the update on where we are uh, lighting thus far. So nothing is connected or wired up. So I've still got to put in these back ones. Um, going to have to pop a few more holes in the body because we need mirrors still few more scale details and then get this thing wired up. So a little bit more to go. Well, I still wasn't happy with the uh, magnet hold once I got everything uh, clearanced on the rear. So it, it came down and it, it shut, but I think because of the two brass axles and then the weight, it just, uh, when I pull up on the fenders, it would drop um, even though it was a good connection up here. So why I like using these magnets because they're so small and uh, they're so thin. So it allows you to actually stack these to get more hold. So that's exactly what I did, but instead of raising the body, because I've got this horizontal line here, 
didn't want this nose up any higher. I actually lowered the mount um, one position and then stacked another magnet. So that mount is all the way down as low as it can go, sitting on all the plugs. And you can see one magnet is actually sticking up here to the hood, which it doesn't really matter. Those aren't glued. You just drop one on there for more strength. So now it drops down. Great hold. So just a little tip there on these magnets. They are uh, definitely worth trying. Rare earth magnets from uh, Lee Valley Tools. Okay, I'm working on the uh, wiring here and I think I figured out how I want this all to work. So I've made a few tweaks here. Um, so these lights came as separate um, strings. They each had a connector. So I brought those together into one. Um, they also came with a pretty bulky Y splitter with uh, servo connectors. So I had this other one with just this, I guess this JST, this little two pin. Um, both of these are super bulky and weighty. So I went ahead and made my own little micro splitter here. So I took uh, one of these connectors that came off of the lights and then I hooked it up with uh, some of these connectors out of the kit that you saw there with these crimp tools. So that made it really easy. Just pick out the connector pins you need, the connection and crimp it up. Um, so I think I'm ready to go. So I'm going to plug this up. So I've got my lights just kind of dry fitted in the front. So hopefully those are going to be nice and flush to those uh, light buckets. So that'll all close with the fenders. Um, so let's pull these out. And uh, we'll test them. So let's get a battery in. Get this on. You can see I've got my Club 5 cyclical switch here. So this is plugged into channel uh, 4. So on the remote, channel 4 is the button switch. Channel 3 controls the headlight channel, which right now I've got that wired up to my uh, bumper lights on the front. So those will switch that. And then this channel 4 is going to control the cyclical switch. So Let's put in this little micro splitter. And then uh, let's get one of these guys' tail lights in. And then we'll do the headlights. Of course, the headlights are going to need an extension. So now those are in. So both on. That's what I want. So the light bar is going to be on the A channel and these will be on the B channel or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. So basically headlights and taillights will come on together and then they will switch off and the roof light is going to switch on and then the roof light and the headlights taillights will all be on on the third cyclical option. So looks like everything's working. I just need to get the roof light whip um, created. But I was waiting to figure out where this guy is going to live on the build so I know what kind of length to run to that roof light. And I think this is going to kind of sandwich the servo slack and fit nicely here, double sided down vertically on this slider tray. So anyways, I think now that I've got it basically game planned, figured out, um, lost a lot of weight here and bulk of wiring. This will be much cleaner. So I think I'm going to make one more extension for the headlights and then I've got to make uh, finish my whip for the roof lights and we are fully lit at that point.
Just a quick update here. So as you saw, we made some good progress. The uh, light bar is in and routed. Uh, wires are nice and flat against the roof. The headlights are in as well. A little bit of detail to darken that visible part of the light bucket. And uh, you can see the plugs queued up here on the driver's side. So I went ahead and made my extension to get to the rear and then all the way back to the switch over there. And uh, by the position of this, it's on the driver's side. So I took out a little bit of this bulkhead. Um, there's the stock side. So just trim that out basically to create uh, just a wireway along the bottom here that will come back to that switch. So I think that's ready to go. The tail lights are still uh, remaining. And looking at those, um, they come with some little micro screws that you'd have to uh, kind of, they're down in this kind of deep shaft in those. So you'd have to have a very small screwdriver. You're doing this on the inside of the body um, and they're supposed to screw into these little pegs, but these pegs really don't have the whole, kind of have a dot, um, but this is hard plastic. So you can't really create your own hole. You'd have to drill it or I don't know. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, just the install seems very quirky. So I'm going to use, I think, a touch of shoe goo um, to get those installed. And then I think, I forgot to mention this, when I made this little whip to bring these together, I like to put some shrink on there, but not shrink it so it's loose. So you can actually slide this um, up and down the wire way. So that kind of helps with wire management and bringing like, you know, headlights or taillights together um, and then routing them. So just a little tip there to pre-think something like that. So we're gonna get those in. And then the last thing I got on was the CC hand mirrors, which are just gorgeous. They're always a nice print, all the CC hand stuff. So essential for Jeeps, at least I think, gotta have the mirrors on there. So I think those were the last two holes I needed to poke in this body. So from the factory, this has four for the bumper, four in the bed, two in the cab. So that's 10 holes from the factory. So we've added eight in the bed. We added eight for the handles, that's 16. Um, we added four for the roof rack, so that's 20. We added six for the lights, that's 26. 28 with the mirrors, so that's 28 holes plus the 10 it came with. That's 38 holes in this body. Oh, the tail lights, that's four more. So what did I say? 28, 38, so that's 42 holes in this body, if you can believe that. And I think... I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to put any more in it, but I think it looks pretty good to have 42 holes in it. But anyways, time to get those tail lights in. Okay, all the final scale details are on and this thing looks awesome. I'm super happy with it, but I don't even want to distract you with it yet. I think mean, let's get it on the scales, see where we ended up. Um, I've got the stock battery in there, so this will be a true running weight. And then maybe possibly make an adjustment based on this. Let's sell this guy in. Let's give it a, a fair wiggle here. So it looks like it's going to settle in around 505 and a 5248 uh, front bias, which is not horrible for a trail truck. 
This does have some scale gear added to the bed, so not unexpected. We've got brass front and rear axles and brass uh, hex weights as well, front and rear behind those resin wheels. So I think I may remove the rear ones and that may bump a percentage forward. So that may help overall. Let's flip over to ounces. So 17.9 ounces overall. So I'm gonna make this quick adjustment, get it back on the scale and see if that did help. All right, got these brass hexes removed from the rear, replaced those with plastic stock hexes. So let's get this on the scales again here and see what that did. So it looks like we dropped around 13, 14 grams off of the rear axle. So that gave us a percent push to the front. So definitely helpful. So 491.7, I think we were 505 point something. Um, let's flip to ounces really quick, 17.3. So definitely uh, helpful. Uh, I may look at further ways to tune a little more front bias into this, but honestly, I'm not striving for a 60-40 rig in this. It's the scale trail truck, and I think I've definitely achieved that. So I think it's time to plug it in, turn on the lights, and show you guys all these cool scale details on here. So let me get all this out of the way and I'll be back. All right, this is it, finished product. So I don't know what you think, but I am super stoked with it. All these little added scale details, I think really took it over the top here. So let's take a quick run around the truck. So the front, of course, we've got the faux winch added and the diff skid, and then a little tribute to Moab this time with the Utah plates. And then of course we've got the CB antenna and then transferred over all the Gladiator trail gear, little paintwork detail. And then the rear tail lights painted up and installed and the shackles. Man, this thing just looks killer. Exactly how I envisioned it with the green and bronze. That just looks so good. And so happy with these clear windows. That just worked out super well to get that window trim as the JLU actual window sticker surround just worked out perfectly. So I think now let me uh, show you under the hood here and then we'll get it plugged in. So plug that in and got to route that down to clear that interior always. So you can see here it opens up plenty of slack on the back. Everything is super low. Let me hold it down here and show you. So very clean under there. I just put a little bit of tape on each side of the plug here to hold those up. Interior is just taped in, but uh, ended up adding, besides the two glued here, the two to the hood, there's actually two on each side. So there's eight magnets total up front. So plenty of hold and those, uh, pop right into place. The uh, flubber stuffers, fender wells, don't need any adjustment. They just set in there perfectly now. So all that is just working out super well. Tons of hold with that brass axle and brass front end. So that's gonna work out well. Let me turn this guy on. Let me turn on the transmitter. I think what you want to see is a little lighting action. So of course we've got the bumper lights wired to channel three so they can go into hazard or off or just on. And we've got the headlights, tail lights. Ooh, light bar. I'm loving that yellow uh, lens there and that warm white, just giving a really big yellow glow up there. I think that looks really good with the green. Let's take a look at these tail lights. Oh, those look great. That little added bit of paint detail just really took those over the top. Looking like a, a real Jeep. Super nice. Man, just super happy with this. 
Definitely not a build with the most lights, but it definitely has really cool lights for the few that it does have. Man, I'm super happy with that. Loving the, the scale detail of the WT Micro bronze wheels and Spider Customs um, printed light bar as always is just fantastic and his exo cage just so so many little goodies got added onto this um, to make it into this trail truck but you know it takes a clear vision to make a trail truck like this and I think I had one from the beginning and uh, I don't think I deviated really on anything um, just exactly what I wanted to end up with. So I'm super happy with this. I don't know about what you think, but uh, as always, uh, thanks for coming along on the, the build journey. Sorry this thing took so long. Hopefully you learned something. I know I always do, but uh, I guess until next time, thanks for watching and stay tuned for what's next.